Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you how to prepare for an Oxbridge Medicine interview in one to two weeks. It's very much possible to do it in this time frame. I did it and in this video, I'll show you how. Specifically, I'll also be showing you which points to prioritise first. For those of you who are new here, my name is Maria and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. I had to do an interview for all of the medical schools that I apply to and I got accepted by all of them. I also currently coach people in how to prepare for their interviews, so I'd say I have a fair amount of experience. This video is specifically about the preparation stages. I'll be telling you about what things you need to do before the interview, so what content to revise, what skills to brush up on, and what extra reading would be helpful. If you're more interested in the interview experience itself, I've already released a video about this, which you can check out right here. I also have a video coming out about tips while you're in the interview, so stay tuned for this. This video is mainly focused on medicine, but honestly, a lot of the points here are applicable to any other Oxbridge interview. So point number one is start with the news. This is because this comes up all the time. It doesn't really matter if you haven't been following the news over the last few months. You can catch up on this relatively quickly. I definitely did. So it might be worth making some notes or mind maps about some of the biggest cases or controversies at the time. There's often a big case in the media that they'll bring up. So a few that come to mind from the last few years are the Charlie Guard ethical case, uh, the CRISPR-Cas9 controversy, junior doctor nursing strikes, and the COVID-19 pandemic, of course. I can't really imagine uh, medical interviews without uh, any mention of COVID-19. Um, so they might ask you directly about these cases um, and in doing so they might take more of an ethical or political slant. In some cases though they might get you to think about mechanisms, so like the biochemistry underlying something, and that was the case for CRISPR-Cas9 for me. If you've had some time thinking about this sort of thing or read about the debates, you'll likely come up with much better, more mature and well-reasoned responses. So I highly recommend. BBC Health is a good bet. I would recommend reading the last three to four months of news. And remember to also look at research and development um, of drugs as well. So BBC Science section might be helpful for this. I'd also recommend checking out who won the Nobel Prize for your subject. So for medicine, this is the Physiology and Medicine Prize. I've seen questions like this come up in interviews. I think they're really mean, and I don't really expect anyone applying to uni to know this, so I think it's all the more impressive if you can. For other subjects, checking out your relevant news section, um, or for example, the Financial Times or The Economist might be particularly helpful. Remember, even if it's not explicitly asked, if you can bring in knowledge of the outside world in your interview, this will make your application way stronger. OK, so point number two, um, brush up on medical ethics. So you're probably familiar with the four pillars of medical ethics. If you're not, you really should. Um, so I recommend revising these and practice applying them to unfamiliar contexts especially structuring your responses. I particularly recommend Medic Portal and examples from the ISC interview book, but honestly, anything online will probably be helpful. I recommend generating a bank of the most important ethical scenarios because a lot of these repeat. Things like euthanasia, abortion, blood transfusions and Jehovah's Witnesses and vaccinations. Um, but yeah, on the whole, I recommend practicing how to structure your argument because this will make you seem a lot more logical and a stronger applicant. So the next point is on focus on your knowledge of global health and epidemiology. So they like to ask about what the biggest causes of mortality in the world are and they also like to ask about how this compares to the UK. So it's definitely worth checking the WHO website. It's also worth understanding very briefly what these biggest causes of mortality are so you can talk through them and discuss why they might be more prevalent in certain places. So in particular, it's important to make a distinction between communicable and non-communicable diseases. 
especially in the context of vaccine availability. Um, a context that I came up across when I was preparing for my interview was the five white poisons of the Western world. So these are related to the increased risk of some chronic diseases. I revised them before the interview and I felt a lot more confident. They all might also ask you about what the most important drugs to develop are in the future. And if you understand the prevalence of disease in the UK, you're in a much better place to answer this. Okay, so the next point is to review your A-level content because a lot of the time this will be a baseline expectation. So things that I found to come up a lot are the oxygen dissociation curves and the Bohr effect. Organic chemistry uh, and being able to tell what certain molecules are is also really important and came up in my interview. Uh, I'd also recommend having a look at genetic calculations, so Hardy Weinberg, but also Planet Squares. Um, if you're uncomfortable with the material that you'll be examined on in a few months, this might suggest that you won't cope well with the degree because it's just going to build and be more complicated. I would personally prioritise biology and chemistry, but if you also do maths, I would recommend uh, approaching unfamiliar graphs because they may expect you to draw one in the interview. They did for me and that was terrifying. Okay, point number five is to look over your personal statement. So make sure that you're clear about anything that you've said, any acronyms or procedures, and make sure you understand exactly what they are because it can be quite embarrassing if you get asked and you just don't know. Also, if you read any books, make sure you know what they're about because you could get asked about those as well, potentially even by the person who wrote the book. If you've done any cool supercurricular things like winning an essay competition, review your essay because um, they might ask you about it. Um, they asked me, so it's super important to be confident with this and to be able to explain your research and reasoning, that will really make you shine as an applicant. So if you have any extra time, I would also recommend having a look at medical imaging because this can come up as well. So interpreting different scans, so things like x-rays, MRIs and ultrasound. And it's also important to appreciate the differences between the modalities, um, so the pros and the cons. Uh, I'd also revise the main long bones of the body because who knows, they might just show you a bone and expect you to know what it is. The last thing, and I think something that's super important, is actually practicing your delivery skills. I'm posting a video all about interview skills, so check this out when it comes out. But uh, first of all, I'd say develop and work on these by practicing verbalizing your answers on your own. And then build up and do mock interviews with your family. You can find previous Oxbridge questions online and print these and then just get them to read them out and put you on the spot. Uh, you can do mock interviews in school with your friends and also with your departments. So for example, your head of sick form or your teachers in school, uh, they tend to have a good idea of what kind of questions come up and to get you to think about new content on the spot, which is exactly what happens in these Oxbridge interviews. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, as always, just ask in the comments section of the video. Anyway, that's all from me. Bye, guys.